What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're in the garage. It's starting to rain outside, so we got the car up on jack stands in the garage. And uh, I got an idea for this today, and it's I don't really recommend it to anyone. <laughs> Um, but as you guys know, if you've been following along with the channel, uh, this car does have a rod knock. Not sure. It just kind of started happening, unfortunately. Um, but I do have another block right here that we are sending out to get closed deck, but I haven't sent that out yet. And it's like a five month wait right now. I don't want to pull this motor out just to redo everything, just to swap it out with that one in a few months or even sooner than that maybe. Um, so what I, what I plan on doing, cylinders two, three, and four, you can essentially see the rods from underneath the bottom of the block. If you take the oil pan and baffle and little tray out. Um, and essentially, if your rod bearing in on rod two, three, or four is bad, you can technically replace it from the bottom of the car. Now, Here's why that's an awful thing to do and you should never do it. When it, you spin a rod bearing, uh, it's essentially breaking up little metal shards and they're going throughout your block. So they're dispersed throughout the block. And the only way to really clean that up is to split the cases and detail the whole block. Um, so that's what I'm kind of risking right now. So here's the plan. Here's what I'm thinking. We drain the oil. We cut the oil filter up, see if there's any metal shards in there see if there's any metal shards in the oil pan once we drop that out. If there's not many, I'll probably go ahead, clean it up the best I can. We'll slap some new bearings in there with some oil. We'll do the little shoelace trick on the crankshaft to polish it up. And, you know, slap it back together once I clean it up the best I can. And hopefully we can get a few hundred, maybe a few thousand miles out of it. I just wanna be able to drive the car just around town and test out the coilovers test out the wheels once I get them on and do all that before I, you know, spend all the money putting into that block. So yeah, that's what I want to do. We're going to try it out. I know it's not ideal, but I just want to, I want to drive this thing again before we spend all the money to do the built block. So without further ado, let's go ahead. We'll start dropping out the oil pan. I already got the car up on jack stands and uh, yeah, I'll walk you guys along with the process. Also, another negative to doing it this way, um, you can't really accurately check rod bearing clearances, which is the clearance between your rod bearing and your crankshaft. Um, so, you know, it's, it's really a janky kind of hack, but I mean, I've seen people get away with it. I've seen people on the forums talk about doing it and, uh, and really a short block doesn't really mean anything to me because I have another one. And I honestly don't think, unless there's a ton of shards in there, I don't think it'll really screw it up too bad. Um, so I'm just going to go for it and we'll see what happens. All right. We got the little GoPro down here now. This is the oil pan. So we're going to go ahead. I believe this is a 17 mil. We're just going to take out this drain plug, drain the oil out. We got a little bucket down here. Um, and then we can go ahead and take the oil filter off um, and try to get as much oil out of this thing as we can. Just cut the top off the oil filter. Go ahead and pull that off. All right, well, that oil actually looks really, really good. So after review, I don't think there's really any metal flakes in there at all. I think whatever was in there was just from when we cut the top off the oil filter. So yeah, I mean, oil looks pretty good. Nothing wrong with that. Having you guys on the GoPro, it's so different because I don't know how it's going to come out. So if it's bad, apologize. Not good with the GoPro settings yet. But um, yeah, I guess we can go ahead and start pulling off the oil pan, which I'm hoping we don't have to drop the exhaust manifold. Seen a few people do it without. Some people have to um, just because it's really hard to pull it, separate it from the block. You can't really get anything behind it to pry on it with the exhaust manifold there. But um, I guess we'll figure that out. So yeah, let's get under the car and start taking those bolts off. Okay, so we're under the car now. As you can see, there's a series of a lot of bolts that hold this oil pan 
into the bottom of the block. Now, behind this little subframe piece here, there's like four bolts back there. So it looks like we're gonna have to jack the motor up a little bit, which is pretty easy. It's that 14 millimeter nut right there. And then there's one on the other side right there. So if you're looking at the oil pan drain plug right there, just look up and it's right there. You're just gonna break those loose, take them right off. And then back here on the trans, we'll probably get a two by four or a four by four and essentially jack it up from right here. That'll lift the block up enough to where we can get those back bolts out of there. They're gonna be a pain in the butt, but I think uh, it's the only option. Motor mount nuts are out, got that one out, and that guy out. And we got the jack underneath the transmission. We're about to jack it up. So, if you guys can see, we're about, I have it. It's hard to record under here, but you see it's right in front of that case. It's kind of just jacking up the base of the transmission. You don't want to pinch any wires or hoses, so make sure you got nothing there. Um, but yeah, once that's free, we'll lift it up a little bit and give us enough room to get those little bolts out back there. So we got a lot more room up behind there now. No, it doesn't look like much, but I think we can make it work with a universal. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead, get all these bolts out, and then we can work on splitting it from the block. I don't know what you guys can see up there, but we got all the bolts out all the way around the oil pan. And I did take some time trying to use a block of wood and kind of hit this thing out, but the silicone's pretty tight up in there. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna pull the exhaust manifold off. We gotta pull these heat shields off. So there's just a bunch of these little bolts all the way around it. Um, and then there's a few bolts that hold it to the bottom of the block. So we're gonna take that off and that'll leave us enough room like over here somewhere to get a little um, putty knife or something up there. And we can use that to kind of work the oil pan off. If we take a putty knife right up in there, it won't really score up the block at all, um, which is what you want. And you don't want to damage the oil pan. As you can see, I kind of dented it a little bit. And yeah, it's, it's not good. I got to try to get those out once we drop it out. But yeah, that's what I'm going to do. We'll pull the exhaust manifold off and uh, we'll go from there. Exhaust manifold's off. We left the O2 sensor right in there, I just unplugged it from the top. Now I'm just gonna take this little putty knife here and we're essentially just gonna use probably the little rubber mallet there and just kind of break the silicone free with this guy and uh, just wiggle it around in there until it breaks free. But I'm gonna get going on that and uh, I'll show you guys along the way. So as you can see, this is pretty much off now. It took a little while just with a putty knife and a little screwdriver under the putty knife and then you can just kind of pry it down. Dipstick I just pulled out of there. Um, and now, yeah, it's just kind of on on the other side. So I'm just going to work it. And uh, we'll pull this thing off. And then we can start unbolting the baffles and tray inside of this. Oil pan's off. So on these little feeds, we just got a bolt on each side. Um, and then there's one up there. And I think that's it on this pickup actually and then the tray we just got a few of these little bolts all over the side of it so we're just gonna go ahead take all those off and then we'll be able to see the rods up above also all this silicone that's still on here we're gonna have to scrape all this off and make it nice and clean when we reseal it so just take a little razor blade and maybe some brake clean or something as you can see that's where I was working with it and with the putty knife really didn't score up anything. So um, yeah, just go ahead, clean that up. We'll get the pickup and tray taken off and then we can get up to the top. So let's go. Apologize, it's, I apologize if it's a bit dark, but we got the oil pan off, we got the baffle off, we got the trays off. I went around, checked all the rods. None of them are really that bad. I don't know if you guys can see this. Uh, That one, I think that's cylinder number four. That one has the most play out of all of them. It's got a lot of side-to-side -side play. And you can hear that. So we're gonna pull this rod cap off. It's just the two bolts. It might be a little bit tough to get the top one, but we gotta get it off. And then we can pull the rod bearings out and work on a way to get the new ones in. There's really no metal shards that I can see, which is really, really nice. So 
I have plastic gauge and we're just gonna try to, you know, fix this rod knock real quick. So we do have the rod taken apart. These are my old rod bearings and they are pretty freaking smoked. They're literally like broken and smushed quite a bit. For example, here's another rod bearing that's not as bad. And you can see the size difference, um, how bad these ones got. So um, yeah, like this one has the little tab that sticks off still. These are literally broken off. So these are no good. So what I'm gonna try to do is get a set of rod bearings um, we're going to polish the rod cap and rod back up as well as the crankshaft. And then, um, I do have some plastic gauge so we can check a rod bearing clearance to the best of our ability. I'll just throw some rod bearings on here, tighten it down, torque it down, and then pull it back off. And we're, I'm going to go for like seven or 1.7 thou, I think is kind of right around where I want to be. I still got to look up, figure out what the torque spec is for the rods. But um, other than that, yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to do. And then we can move on to putting it back together, which is exciting. And I might be able to actually drive the car. So we'll see. All right. So we just did the plastic gauge, torque down the rod caps to 38.4 foot pounds is what the spec is for the stock STI EJ257 rods. Um, so with the new rod bearings you want to go for like i was going for like 1.7 thou i know some people do like 2 thou or 2.2 if they're pushing 25 pounds but this thing being still like somewhat stock uh, i'm looking for like 1.7 to 2 ish so that's what i did uh turns out it's like 1.9 thou with the new bearings so we should be good so what i'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take some like 2000 grit sandpaper and wet sand the um, inside of the, the rod and then the crankshaft as well, just a little bit. You don't wanna obviously sand down any material, but just a little bit to clean it up. And then you can take like a, a shoelace and wet it. And then you can take it to the, the crank and you can polish the crank that way with it still in the car. We'll start getting everything polished up, take some assembly lube or like heavy oil and uh, you know, make sure to lubricate everything really good when you put it back together. All right, so if you guys have been following along with the channel, you'd know that uh, in between me tearing this apart and waiting on the rod bearing to come in, I managed to fracture my wrist and we're awaiting a full cast, so Super unfortunate, but I really want to get this car back together and running. So I'm going to give it my best effort to do it with one hand. It's going to be really, really difficult, but um, just going to go to work with it. But we have two sets of rod bearings. These are 0.026 over. These are standard. And then I also have these ACLs, which are a uh, quarter of a millimeter over. So 0.25 mil over. Um, so the plan is to just plastic gauge all of them, see what one I get the best clearance with. So I'm just going to go and do that real quick. And, uh, I'll, I'll just catch up with you guys once we get the best ones in there. Just, you know, checking it with plastic gauge. And then when you go to finally put them in, throw some assembly lube and hopefully we'll be all good. But yeah, I still got you guys on the GoPro cause now it's just, it's just easier. Um, when I only have one hand, but, um, yeah, I'm going to go get this done, and I'll catch up with you guys when I'm back. All right, guys, so I know I'm kind of jumping around a little bit, but just want to get this done. Um, so if you look up here, obviously, we got the oil pickup back on and the tray on, which means we did get those rod bearings replaced. I did the third and fourth uh, rod bearings um, just because, you know, I could easily get to the third, so why not do them? Yeah, the third were actually fine. Um, nowhere near to as bad as the fourth, so... Anyways, right now I'm just working on cleaning up the surface where the oil pan sits. We're going to want that as clean as possible. Um, you know, that way we can get a good seal. But yeah, I think we're good under here. So I'm also working to get all the old sealant off the rim of the oil pan itself and fixing any dents or dings that we might have put into it when we took it off. So um, just want to get this as good as I can. I'll be 100% honest with you guys. When I was cleaning that out, I did see a few metal flakes, 
which is kind of unfortunate, but there wasn't many. Uh, I mean, like literally just a, a fingertip load of them. Uh, and obviously we cleaned it all up. So there was nothing in the oil filter. And I mean, if there's something in the oil pump, well, <laughs> it'll be in there until we, you know, like I said, this block's only gonna hold us over until we get that one back from out front. I, uh, you know, <laughs> kind of slacking on that, but um, yeah, I'm not gonna be driving the car much. I just wanna be able to start it up and drive it if I need to. We can go and test out the coilovers, stuff like that. Um, and I just don't want it to be obviously knocking. So I'm gonna go ahead, start, or I guess finish cleaning up this oil pan and then get that slap back on the car. Now I did torque down uh, the rod bolts, like the, yeah, rod bolts to uh, 38.4 foot pounds is what OEM spec is. And then uh, for the tray and the oil pickup, uh, I did eight, eight foot pounds, I think is what I did. Um, and then for the oil pan itself, it's something like four foot pounds. It's very light. Um, the sealant is what really holds it on there. I'm gonna go get this done and then uh, we'll get to throwing on the exhaust manifold and finishing this thing up. Oil pans back in. All the bolts are in, torque the four foot pounds. Those back bolts were not as bad as I thought they were gonna be, but still kind of pain in the butt. Uh, dipsticks back in, and uh, we still gotta tighten up the drain plug. Can't forget about that. So we'll get that guy back in, get the O2 sensor back, zip tied up, back up with the motor. And then once we get that in, then really all we have left is lower the motor back down, fill her up with oil, new oil filter, and uh, oh boy, give her hell. So let's get that thing back on. And then tomorrow I'll go pick up some oil and uh, we'll get a first start in this thing. Okay guys, I don't know, not sure how much you can see under here, but we got everything back together. We'll get an oil filter and some oil tomorrow, but exhaust manifolds back on. And uh, yeah, everything's plugged in, ready to go. Motor mounts are back bolted down. And yeah, she's good to go. I uh, putting that exhaust manifold on with one hand is something I never ever want to do again. That I, I think I've been like two hours deep into it, um, but got it. So cars back together, cleaned up finally for the first time in like two weeks. And uh, yeah, tomorrow I'll go get some oil. We'll try this thing out. I'm not getting my hopes up because, you know, <laughs> I don't, I, can, I can't ever get my hopes up with these things anymore, but I, it would be nice to see this thing not knock anymore. So I know that's what was knocking. I just hope that the new rod bearings will, uh, you know, once it builds oil pressure, it'll be fine. Once I get the oil in, I'll spin the motor over like five times by hand just to get some oil kind of pre-flowing in there. And then we'll crank it nice and slow and get that oil pump going, build some oil pressure, and uh, yeah, that's really all we can do. So uh, yeah, catch you guys tomorrow, bright and early. Peace. If I'm being honest, I don't think I've ever been more nervous to start a car, but um, I just really hope this will work out. So I'm just gonna crank, I cranked it a few times by hand just to get some oil on the new bearings a little bit. Um, but now I'm just gonna slowly crank it over a little bit and then we'll end up starting it. So let's give this a shot. Some oil pressure. Yes! No knock, baby! Woo! I'm gonna shut it off for a second. No knock, baby! Let's go! Wow, I'm happy right now. The only thing is, we can't really drive it yet because the CV axle boot's torn. I do have a kit inside to fix it. Actually, I bought the 2007 STI kit because that's the only one I could find, so hopefully it works. Um, but I will take this down the road just to make sure we're not knocking. Um, but yeah, I just gotta, I gotta take it really easy. Um, I don't wanna screw anything up, so uh, yeah. But <sighs> stoked, man, so stoked. Well, it's drivable. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but it's drivable. I gotta replace that CV axle and maybe raise the coilovers up a little bit for now just because they're rubbing pretty good. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's running, so I'm happy. 
Um, and yeah, we'll get it back to the house and start replacing that CV axle. But we'll do that in the next video. I'm probably gonna end off this video here. Sorry, it's kind of all over the place, but you know, it is what it is. So appreciate you guys for watching and uh, catch you in the next one.